Hello everybody, I come in the name of the Lord. I wanted to go over uh, the actions taking place and then the spiritual aspects being done to reveal more knowledge that can be built up on in the understanding on the foundation of Jesus Christ, uh, built up in Christ. So therefore, as I read what was written, yeah, uh, and then explain the invisible aspects that has been shared to me by by the teacher, yeah, by the spirit, um, there's no deception in it. Uh, I'm a servant to serve, and this is uh, a lot more knowledge to be built up in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, in the, just more power, yeah, during the times, and uh, in this sense, able to share it, because the will of God is being fulfilled, and this is the time that, as a servant, it's been shared and revealed to share, yeah? And it's what we all know, so it's not, I'm not telling you anything new, but I'm revealing more that has been revealed to me by the light, yeah? With those who will then be enlightened to it, yeah? It's as simple as that, yeah? So I'm going to be in Matthew 3.13. That's where we're going to start, yeah? And it's the baptism of Jesus, because what it's going to touch base on is the fulfillment of all righteousness, which will conclude to one of the many, many main aspects of the times of the Gentiles and what their purpose was, and one of those to bring about everlasting righteousness and to sin and stuff like that. And when the uh, uh, revealing and just the more knowledge has come, more uh, all those six things will have more uh, substance for people to wrap mind around, yeah? So that uh, as we build up in Christ and we get closer to the end of the age, everything will be set up as foundation, strong enough for the kingdom to come, yeah? And land on, um, bringing the kingdom of heaven. I come in the name of the Lord. So here we go, okay? The baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. Yeah? So a lot has just been revealed there. Yeah? Um, as you know, uh, John's ministry was to prepare the way. Yeah? And to also reveal the, uh, the Messiah, the, the consort of... Um, Israel, yeah, the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God, the one that everyone has been waiting to come. And in his ministry, as he has said, the only, a man could only do what was in his power given to him and permitted by heaven, yeah? So there was a limitation to man's power and, it was, and everything that was done at that time was still from heaven, yeah? It was still for the will of God. But there was no sense of freedom, yeah? Uh, no one who was not great uh, or imbued with that. Not everybody could just have something, yeah? Everyone was at their limit, given to them and granted by the authority and power of heaven, permitted, yeah? And so that's what John knew, and that's what he was uh, doing his ministry on. And then, so the repentance of uh, the forgiveness of sins through the knowledge of... Uh, or what is it? Salvation in the repentance for the forgiveness of sins in the knowledge of the forgiveness of sins, yeah? Um, that will lead you on paths of peace, yeah? So instead of the old law, something that was outside that never happened before for those who were not part of that old law and or the law at that time, which we considered the obsolete law, yeah? Uh, they weren't privy to that, so through water they could clean and still go on paths of peace in their lives as many people then already knew that there was a God and there was more but they were already cut off and they didn't know how they could get closer so they were living in fear they were far away yeah preparing the way bringing people near but he couldn't bring anyone yeah so that's why he was preparing the way through that water baptism and given by the power of heaven to him for that ministry the water was to reveal Reveal the one who would then come after, who would be greater. And when he came, the water or John's ministry diminished, yeah? Because 
even though he was before, he was or he what even though he would come after John, he was preferred before John. Yeah, and so there was an awareness that John had, and so that's what he was doing, right? And when Jesus came to him, John tried to deter him. Yeah, and to deter it means to stop. Yeah, to uh, try to discourage someone but how you stop and how to discourage is through reasons of doubts on fear of consequences yeah so that's what john was doing like no and you come to me i need to be baptized by you you come to me like that's how you're supposed to do it but jesus replied let it be so now yeah it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness then john consented which means agreed even though he was still at that in a fear of a consequence at that moment there was a wrongdoing and as you know all wrongdoing is sin yeah and um the reason why john at that epitome even though he knew what his ministry was to reveal and this one came and he even knew and was like you come to me not like oh who are you and then oh i feel something it was i sense you i know you something about you yeah you're the one somehow but you come to me, yeah? The reason John couldn't fathom it and go past it is because what was given to him was to that power limit of what heaven permitted him in his ministry, yeah? So that when Jesus said, no, we will, it is proper for us to do it this way to fulfill all righteousness, yeah? John consented but in fear and Jesus went and did it in the wrongdoing of sin and so you can see that John was in that mindset of man as high as man could think, the greatest among men, born around, uh, among women, just as uh, Jesus had said John was, yeah? However, the reason why Jesus could think bigger as at that time, still, whatever was granted from heaven was what a man's power uh, and whatever he had to do was was granted from heaven only permissible yeah um jesus was already thinking on the will of god yeah even though in all the world's eye at the highest point it was that was a wrongdoing it was sin but that's why when john used that water which the water would then reveal the one of israel the messiah yeah uh like any man that john had baptized though he would go down in the water come back up the man would be clean for a reset or that repentance but the water would be dirty yeah in that spiritual sense think about it like if you had spiritual eyes you could go in the jordan and say that it that jordan river had sparkly 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 and oh here's another man baptized boom boom that man would be, look sparkly yeah and the water that he just left would then be gloomy yeah okay he'd been washed the cloth is clean the sludge has remained in the water now, when Jesus, as a man, went, it was the first time then that a man went, and when he came out, the water remained sparkling, yeah? It remained clean. It just revealed to all of creation, like, this is something different, because this is, this is a man, yeah? Born, this is a man that was born into the world of women, uh, and he just came, and the water just revealed him, yeah? And that's why that right there was as a wrongdoing, which is all sin, was done by the one who was made to be sin because he had no sin revealed by the water yeah and then later on you will understand yeah oh uh, after everything that he was made to be sin for us yeah and that's now we're going to remind you of the this clothing yeah that cleaning of the cloth so you don't have to continue cleaning all the time it's not you can just wash your feet kind of thing yeah okay now it goes into um uh, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water and saw the Spirit, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So a lot has just been revealed there, yeah? Um, when it says that he came out of the water to, and was revealed, yeah? At that moment, heaven was open. That means everything in heaven and on earth and under the earth, everything in creation 
had just been opened. There was a new type of freedom that was just presented to every single aspect of life in an impartiality that was never there before. And it's not like, oh, everyone was waiting for that. Uh, they were not expecting that day to come. It's almost like, okay, here's a door that's full of people that have been locked inside for uh, thousands and thousands of years, yeah? And they're still alive. But since that door has never been opened, they don't, they're not really paying attention to it. And now that door's open, secretly opened, it's not like everyone's like, whoa, I, I'm, I see that door, yeah? It was just open the doors. And they are still living their everyday doing their everyday things without any thought that, wow, there's a new type of freedom, yeah? Freedom throughout everything. The heavens open. And he saw the Spirit of God, yeah? And it descending like a dove and lighting on him. With that, descending, yeah? It means it does come down, but when it's descending like a dove, it's not going to be descending like a, like a helicopter or a hummingbird, yeah? They can go straight up and straight down. Yeah, a dove, any type of other bird, but a dove especially, you can see when it goes to land on something, it has to come at an angle. Yeah, so descend at an angle and it comes at the speed, whatever it's going through. But right before it gets to anything, it has to kind of slow down in the air. Yeah, stop. It kind of flutters and gets its feet bared. Yeah, okay, uh, grabs onto whatever it's about to land on and gracefully. Uh, connects, yeah, from flying to stillness. Uh, when it says that it descended like a dove and lighting on him, yeah, that's what happened. So, there was something that you could see, yeah, that was a light, yeah, and came down out of heaven, and you could see it, and right when it got to Jesus, who just came out of the water, it kind of hovered, and went on him, and there was no more. It wasn't like he was all of a sudden and shiny, and everyone was like, wow, there really is a light on you, and uh, there's something hanging out on your shoulder, you know? No, it was something that you could see. Then it went, it went throughout all whatever was around, not stopping at anybody else, and right when it got to him out of the water, and disappeared into him, yeah? The word lighting, yeah, it's a arrangement of the effect or the effect of light, yeah? So an arrangement or an effect of light. It's also the equipment in a home for producing light, yeah? That's lighting. And when it says lighting on, yeah, that action that this light can do, it means comes to a rest on a spot and the, like how the bird can light on you. Or, in other words, alighted, yeah? That's why that word is so important, because the light of the world, yeah? And it was a spirit of God. They knew it was a spirit of God. Um, at that moment, or it, it lighted on him, yeah? And then, next, it says, A voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Okay? Now, a lot has just been introduced here. The first time that a title of a son has been proclaimed by some voice that came out of heaven, yeah? They knew that it was the Spirit of God, but they didn't say the voice of God. It was a voice came out of heaven. Whose voice was it, yeah? Um, uh, and whose voice is proclaiming that? The son. A son is here. All of creation has been waiting for the sons of God to reveal themselves, yeah? This voice then blasted that announcement to everybody in creation out of the sky. My son, this is my son. Yeah, not your son. This is my son, whom I love, and I, with him I am well pleased. Yeah? Uh, with that, when it says... Oh, sorry. With that... Uh, immediately after Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Okay? And that's chapter 4, verse 1. Sorry. So, why then was Jesus led into the desert to be tempted? Yeah? By that Spirit that just alighted on him to be tempted by the devil. Yeah? 
because God is not a hypocrite. And as we know, it says, test every spirit, yeah? And the spirit that has come from God proclaims that Jesus has come in the flesh, yeah? And that word has come, yeah? Has means that uh, it is now, yeah? And has come means it is now, as well as it was then. So whenever something will happen, even if you can read it then, at that moment means it what it was immediately there and in this time when you say he has come, yeah? It's immediately there. That is the spirit of God saying it is, it is, it was, and it is, has, yeah? Not had come or will come or Jesus was in the flesh. He has come. Those, it's very important when in this day and age you're sifting through and discerning through everything that is coming down because everybody will be able to prophesy, yeah? All prophecy and vision is about to be sealed. But in that, the impartiality, yeah, it's that it's sealed. The truth one is sealed. But all impartiality is everyone will be able to prof prophesy. And even the old, the old men will have dreams, yeah? An impartiality between everything with uh, illusion, uh, which was, wait, with a deception that has now been granted as a, a delusion sent by God so that men will believe in that lie, yeah? Therefore, still an impartiality and still in complete control by the will of God because he had so loved the world, yeah? Saved everything. That's how this has happened, yeah? But, uh... When you're testing every spirit, yeah? Has come in the flesh. And so, God is not a hypocrite. Just because all this pizzazz happened, yeah? There was still, let's test the spirit. Because we know that it was the spirit of God that came down. But whose voice was that? It could be the voice of, was it the voice of God? Was it the voice of something else? There were things up there, yeah? Uh, multiple heavens, multiple gods. And at that same time, now that one voice had proclaimed something was opened every single part that had only a permissible area now knew it was open they could go anywhere they wanted there was a, a first time a certain type of freedom among all creation yeah and so jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted and also why jesus then taught us in the prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one yeah um, and the reason why it was a desert, yeah, John came to prepare the way and he was in the desert in Judea, yeah, and as we know, it was, has been told us that when an evil spirit is in a person, yeah, and they're cast out, they go through acrid, dry wasteland searching for a place to land, they cannot land, and when they cannot find anything, they go back to where, whence they came, and if they find that place completely cleaned up, they will bring with it seven more spirits even more powerful than itself, yeah? And John's ministry was about preparing the way and making evenings, making uh, straight the paths and evening, bringing down mountains, uh, lifting up valleys, yeah? And in a desert, it is literally very rare when you have like mountains and valleys but you won't have a certain type of depth in a desert because there's no nothing that will deter you yeah you uh say like a rainforest you can go through a rainforest and you will have a certain different depth perception so a different dimension of thinking yeah um and you can read about this and it's learned that when you can get indigenous tribes who have lived in a rainforest their entire lives to go into an open plain, they freak out because their perceptions have been only limited to a certain uh, way of seeing. And when all of a sudden you can't, you cannot understand just something plain and flat, they freak out, yeah? And that's the same thing. There was an impartiality. And that's why the spirit led him into the desert, led him to be tempted to test the spirit. Who was this? What really just happened, yeah? Um, and that's where the devil was. And as you know, that's because it knew where the devil would go. Yeah. At this time, you'll understand why all of a sudden there was 
the possibility of demonic possessions among people because that opening of the freedoms had just occurred, yeah? Um, and many of them were already in the desert, yeah? And that's why if you remember who was in the desert for how, however long, led by Moses, the people of God, yeah? And that's why in this right now, how Jesus kept calling them, you, you're... Your father is the devil, and you are children of the devil. And they're like, no, we only we believe in God. We did everything right. The children of the devil, who was in the desert, yeah? That's where that kind of ties in, if you can see it, right? Okay? So, he was in the desert to be tempted. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. That was a huge rev revelation right there, right? Uh, after 40 days and 40 nights is a long time, yeah? How are you able to still be alive? In a desert, there's no water, and there is no food, and there's no body, yeah? You was by yourself, and then you're hungry? And so in this, um... tempter came to him how would he know to come at a certain time yeah um it wasn't like it was led him to the desert and then for four days and four nights he was tempted 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 he the tempter found jesus when jesus was hungry yeah and in that is a huge significance as we know yeah uh Jesus said, where there is a carcass, the vultures will gather, yeah? And that's death, a stench. There was a certain type of spiritual stench that was happening when Jesus finally felt that hunger because it was a new type of creation. However, how could he still be as living after all that time and not dead, yeah? He was supposedly just a man, right? And in that, with all, everything and that freedom, a spiritual death had occurred and drew the vultures, yeah? And he was hungry because he was a new creation. And as we know, even after the next phase of the new creation that he did, uh, he had risen from the dead and in the doubt that Thomas had, Jesus even said, like, I'm hungry. Give me some bread and fish or whatever. See, I am real flesh. Uh, a spirit doesn't need to eat, but why am I eating? Yeah? And you saw that I died. Like, I am a new creation. This right here was a spiritual type of death that was set up in the heavenly realms, yeah? The vulture came where there's a carcass, yeah? And the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God. And the reason why he asked this is because still test the spirit. And as they knew, it was the spirit of God that alighted on him. But whose voice was that? So he said, son of God. He's already trying to assume. Yeah? He's not like the son of the Lord, son of whatever else is there. But the son of God. Tell these stones to become bread. And it was then by his own power, right? Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And that right there, all this stuff just got aligned, open, aligned everything, okay? Um, Jesus answered, it is written, yeah? As what is written kills the spirit, yeah? However, the tempter said, if you are the son of God, do this. Jesus said, it is written, not. I will not do that or yes or no or anything like that. He gave glory to God, yeah? Not his own volition, yeah? Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In this, there's a proverb, yeah? Proverbs 630. Men do not despise a thief if he steals bread when they're hungry, yeah? And Jesus said, when a son asks a father for bread, does he give him a stone? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as we know, Esau sold his birthright for a piece of bread. And what Jesus had just declared was not by his own power. 
which is then another revelation of when Michael, the archangel, and Satan contended for the body of Moses. It tells us Michael did not use his own power, but said, the Lord rebuke you. And what, how Jesus answered just now was literally, the Lord, the Lord rebuke you. And the reason why this was done this way is because the spirit of truth was truly with Jesus at that moment and just did a conviction of the world with a first concern regarding what is sin. Yeah. And in that regard, it is, do you believe or do you not believe? Which is not you do or not. Yeah. It's do you or don't by how I just said it. What is your measure of listening? And we will determine the answer by what you do next kind of thing, right? And in this, also, it wasn't that Jesus was trying to be coy. It wasn't that Jesus was trying to be uh, uh, crafty, yeah? He has truth in him. So that's why he said, it's written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the question was, are you the son of God? And he said, man does not live on bread alone. It is written, man. He was just proclaiming he's the son of man. But why wouldn't he say no to the son of God or the son of man? The reason why Jesus had to answer like this was not about craftiness. It's because he was the son of God, the son of man, the Lord. He was everything, the high priest. He was everything. So whenever people kept asking him, are you this, this plus plainly, even the Jews, he, it wasn't, Jesus would say, I already told you, but if you read, it wasn't like, I am this, I am that. He told them in a way, but they could not hear, they could not see, yeah? They couldn't go past a certain point. And it wasn't until someone would say, you are blah, 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 which was something new, yeah? That the discernment in Jesus would be like, that was revealed to you. By my Father from heaven and not from any man on earth. That's the only way or how you would be able to know that because I know what I have shared with you. And in that, I'll, I know exactly who you are because I have pretty much come from the Father. And he, when something like this happens, which now there was something new under the sun. New thing. The freedom. Everything was open. Yeah? Back then, there was nothing new under the sun. Yeah? There was something new under the sun. It just happened. When that new thing would come down, Jesus being God, being the Lord, being everything, and a servant of all, obedient to the Father's will, that he could hear everything, yeah? He knew all men. And in that, what I'm concerned, I'm uh, concerning that with or equaling that out with is how he knew Peter was the son of Jonah. Blessed are you, Peter, the son of Jonah, and knew to give Peter the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and also to build his church on that rock and co declare a command and write it down that the gates of Hades will never overcome it. Huge preparation right there. Huge spiritual preparation. Yeah? So, in that, the spiritual, in the spiritual sense right here, the spirit of truth has just convicted the world, come into the world, starting to convict it. And that first, con that first concern about sin has just occurred, yeah? And um, everything in that revelation would then be concerned with the heavenly realms and what would happen next, yeah? Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Okay, so since there was next another temptation with that same exact questioning by the devil, if you are the Son of God, which then just convicted him of sin, do you believe? Do you not believe? If you're asking me now, if I'm the son of God, you have not believed me when I first told you. So you are guilty. You are guilty of not believing. That right there, right? You, do you understand that in that spiritual sense? Yeah? And being in the holy city, which is Jerusalem, 
and standing at the highest point of the temple, that right there was the beginning of the preparation of going to be the last fulfillment of the times of the Gentiles, which is anointing the most holy place. Yeah. Uh, when, as Jesus stood at that, at, or Jesus was, um, Jesus or Satan had him stand. Yeah. It wasn't like Jesus, like, let me stand here. He totally followed obediently to be, te to be tested because he is not a hypocrite. He's the son of God, son of man. Yeah. And so much more God himself and is obedient, a servant of all obedient to his father's will, even to death on a cross. Yeah. That's why he said, uh, this will happen to me. And the ruler of this world is coming to whatever. And I will do this to show the world that I am obedient to my father's will. Yeah. So he stood at the highest point of the temple in this and the freedoms that had just been open is where Jesus also was the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And as I will explain later, what that is, is what you bind on earth is bound in heaven and what you loose on earth is loosed in heaven yeah and at this time it was all open and now the kingdom of heaven was within every man capable open yeah not yet finished but the preparations it was all the beginning of the beginning yeah and so when jesus was at the highest place of the holy city he was also at the most high in heaven at god's holy temple okay being tested tempted um when okay Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test, okay? Now, in that, you could see Satan's new question was with the written word. Yeah, it wasn't like the first time where he was just on his own power. If you are, that was a complete temptation, yeah? Um, that's why, like, you will, um, how do you say, uh, the hunger that Jesus was feeling, yeah, you would think after 40 days, 40 nights, that would be the only thing that you could tempt with. As so in the beginning with the woman and the serpent, yeah, that cunningness. And that's why it's told to us that the woman, when the serpent uh, saw the woman and did what he did, yeah, and she said out loud what happened, and, he's, and he said, did God really say, yeah, that you will... What is it? Did did God uh, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will surely die, the serpent. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for getting wisdom, she took some and ate it. Yeah. And later on, you can you can read that uh, the Lord God called to man. Where are you? That was the Lord God. Yeah. So in this craftiness, yeah, this subtleness, this cunning, it was God did not say to the woman, yeah, did not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, like all that stuff. The woman considered whoever said that to be God, yeah, but it is the Lord God who made that serpent wildly, and the serpent knew that and knew that it was not God that said that, and that's why that cunning came, right? So there was no lie. It was just deceiving, which is telling them truths uh, with dire consequences and not a whole truth and going on the innocence and ignorance of somebody. Yeah. And when it says for everything, 
uh, do not love the world or anything in the world. For anyone who loves, for everything in the world, the uh, craving of sinful flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boasting of what one has and does is not from the Father, but from the world, yeah? It says, when the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food, yeah? The craving of sinful flesh, and pleasing to the eye, the lust of the eye, and also desire for getting wisdom, which wisdom, power, yeah? The boasting of what you have and does is not from the Father, but from the world, yeah? In this, with the temptation that you're hungry and here's some food, yeah? Eat a morsel right there. That is where you will get the concept that we can read in later that their God, who do not believe that, these uh, deceived people, their God is their stomachs, yeah? They go on when they're hungry. They don't do it, yeah? Uh, and it goes past their heart. It goes past their mind. Yeah, the eye has been tricked. The craving has been uh, uh, over has overwhelmed them to be satisfied, and goes past the heart, misses the point, and goes to the stomach. Yeah, their god is their stomach, and they engorge themselves. Yeah, with all this knowledge and wisdom, and therefore they become haughty, and it, they've been deceived. Even though everyone can can enjoy the morsels that they give them, because everyone's hungry. Do you see? That's how. Uh, that's why it was bread and that's why Jesus said man does not live by bread alone But every word that comes from the mouth of God and bread alone is the written scripture that you can read Yeah, but every word that comes from the mouth of God is like the fish Yeah, it's it's gonna be and like that broken pieces that is even more later on in small little portions that came from that whole loaf that was broken um, and every word that comes from the mouth of God means what was written that God has said and what is to be written because nothing was written then the gospel the New Testament nothing like that was written yet and what is even to be declared by his servants at the end of the age that in that time, then you will have to uh, focus on how you hear, yeah, uh, in order to discern my words because those who belong to me will hear, hear my words. They, they can only listen to that. That's what they know, yeah. And that's why as servants of the Most High and sowers of the seed and knowing how to do that, all you do is preach what you know. And that's all. There's no uh, trying to urge somebody or you must do this. No. I say what it is and uh, whoever has ears, it will land in there and it will be found the ones that need to come through in this half a time. Uh, and then on the flip side now, but with the power granted, I will be able to reveal anybody by the by the words. Yeah. Um, by what they say because I will be able to hear if my father is there or not because I know his voice. Yeah. So that's one thing that uh, was really awesome about not striking your foot against the stone, yeah? Because whoever has lifted his heel against him is against me. And striking your foot against the stone, the stone being make these stones into bread. And Jesus saying, one among you is a devil, which God has given me out of the world. And I have... have chosen you not because I wanted to but because I do the will of God and I will clean your feet for you but not all of you is clean yeah because one of you is a devil the one who puts his foot against me is uh against me and the one who dips his hand in the bowl which is the bread yeah with the bread um is the one to betray me yeah and that's why now about the washing of the feet and that even devils have salvation have the ability to be cleaned because that's an impartiality. That's why there's an everlasting salvation, yeah? A great salvation that everyone has. And that's what that type of cleaning, that water, yeah, is. Um, and that's why in this time and age, as it has been declared, there is a time that will stop the evangelism type of thing by understanding that all will know me. You will not have to ask your neighbor, do you know the Lord? All will know me. So do what you have to do. If you obey me, I will know who you are in that certain division of power in heaven, the kingdom of heaven, because it's about power now, because everything was opened, yeah? Um, and uh, you will, uh, everyone will have that salvation, whether they like it or not, yeah? Um, even the devils, everything, yeah? Because he saved everything. So in that, you can understand how, the salvation went to the very heart of the earth as well 
all the way up to the most high throughout everything. Yeah. And with Jesus also saying it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. That right there is a battle against swords. Yeah. Satan just said it is written this and Jesus said it is also written this. Which one is greater? Discern that. Yeah. The reason why it wasn't like, well, mine is greater or mine is greater. Or you can say like, well, that's your opinion. You can, you can, uh, and this is my opinion. We have to just agree to disagree. The reason why this was specifically told to Satan as a par a parry, a rebuttal, and a put in your place is do not put the Lord your God to the test. He's literally telling Satan, your God, not do not put the Lord our God. Do not put the Lord, the you, uh, the world's God, yeah? The Lord, your God, meaning, to the test, meaning, why are you testing me? You can test anybody else, that's what you're here for. But you have not heard me in the first concern of sin, which you're guilty of, and now I'm telling you again, do not put the Lord, your God, to the test. Look closer at me, see who I am, yeah, kind of thing. But can Satan hear, yeah? Was, do not put the Lord, your God, to the test. Yes, I'm a man, I'm hungry. Yes, I'm here to be tempted by you. You're doing your job. But now, do not put the Lord, your God, to the test. I'm just revealing that I'm the Lord. That's what Jesus is saying, yeah, to him. And this is to then the spirit of truth convicting that world concerned in the second part, which is righteousness, yeah? And that is, can you see him? Can you see? Or can you not see? Yeah? That's why in righteousness, because I'm going to the Father where you can no longer see me. And then the blessing before he went was, Thomas, you believe because now you can see. Blessed is he who cannot see and believes. Yeah, Blessed is he who has not seen and still has that same equal faith that you needed. Well, I was with you the whole time and then you saw everything that happened and then still demanded that you put your fingers in my holes kind of thing, right? Blessed is he who has that equal standard without ever seeing yeah that's what it means right there it's concerned righteousness and that faith yeah a righteousness that comes by faith in that maturity of the righteousness of god and uh an everlasting righteousness which is one of the six things that the gentiles had to fulfill yeah um so that was the second part and also declaring i am your god the lord but can you hear nope right to satan while he's being tempted now again the devil took him to a very high mountain yeah and that oh and remember that was the highest point of the temple at the most high the most high the most high yeah uh of the most uh uh pinpointed holy place of god where flesh cannot glory in the presence of god yeah and jesus being man and a son of who was it god was it man it was both because that's how jesus could say what he did at the most high place as the son of man who is flesh as you know as a new creation who could not die because after 40 days 40 nights you will die yeah because springs of living water has come into him they will never neither hunger hunger or thirst there's no need for light yeah in the desert there is no light it's completely dark yeah um Yet, I am here living, I'm here alive by something else that has come down because everything's open and free. And I do, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah? And when you're hungry, that means you have to feed something because your body's like, I'm dying. Yeah? But a death has already occurred there in the spirit. That's why he was being sustained by the life-giving spirit of truth. Yeah? Of God. Of everything. That's why it was a spirit of God, and in that, you know, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, spirit of truth, uh, wonderful counselor, advocate, that's why he had to go to his father in order that the advocate can come, yeah? That's amongst, for all men, the new baptism of the fire, yeah, uh, by the spirit. So, uh, that second concern of righteousness, can you see me or not? I have just told you, how are you hearing? We will then be able to have your verdict by your next action. And again, the devil took him to the very, and that was at the most holiest place, the highest of the high, most high, yeah? Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain 
and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. And this is so much revealed, right? The devil taking him to a high mountain, yeah? Uh, that will be able to show him every single thing in the whole entire world. And the splendor is going to be the highest point on the earth, yeah? Uh, that is just uh, not, not holy, not really, just the biggest power that can be had on earth. Um, that can see, that is, a, you're able to view all the other heads of power, yeah? Um, in that, in heaven then, it would be going to the highest power in heaven, uh, in the kingdom, which would then be the deep, yeah? So going to the, pretty much the lowest place in at, into the deep yeah and in that deep you will be able then to see all of heaven uh, before you yeah all the kingdom the, of the world uh and satan tempting him with the worship yeah and that i will give you everything if you worship and bow down to me and worship was that still at that time even though everything was open so there was a new type of freedom. It wasn't just permitted by heaven uh, what a man or anything could do. Yeah, that was possible. There is a delusion that was given by God to believe the devil has a power over all the world and authority or has some type of power so that people will believe in the lie Yeah, that comes by the devil. In this, it was illusion. It was still by God, a delusion sent to the devil to think that he even had a power to give all the power of the world to someone if they bowed down and worshiped him. Yeah? And in that, Jesus used his own power and said, Away from me, Satan. Okay? That is me literally being like go away not the lord is protecting me or i'm under any type of authority yeah i'm giving i'm through my authority saying go away satan yet jesus still humbled himself for it is written the written word kills the spirit yeah and as you know um that is giving glory to god yeah that's giving glory to something higher than yourself worship the lord your god yeah and serve him only the lord your god so still saying it is written that this is your God. You serve him, uh, worship him, and serve him only. Not and serve the Lord your God only, but and serve him only. And Satan left him. Yeah? Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended. The reason the devil left him is because that just closed down that uh, you will serve him only and i just before i said that what was written i just by my own authority just told you away from me satan satan had no choice but to leave him that was where satan was like this is him yeah and the reason why jesus would then say it is written worship the lord your god yeah is that in that giving power like the prince of heaven like michael the archangel Jesus literally saying, I am a prince of heaven, saying, by the uh, power of the Lord, your God, yeah, worship him only. So not Satan, you worship me, yeah? And, but however, and serve him only. And when there's a command like, away from me, Satan, then you better serve it. If I'm not the one that you are looking for, then you can remain and continue tempting, yeah? The reason the devil left is because he knew the temptation was finished and it was all agreed. The water, the blood, the fire, everything agreed as one. 
this was the one. And if you don't believe me, yeah, it, if you don't believe it, that we're right in this agreement, that this is it, yeah, then try to go back to him after he just said, away from me, Satan, and you will find that you cannot because you must obey him only. And that's why Satan left and the angels came and attended Jesus, yeah, or even attended Satan, yeah. And in that, when Satan left, or when Satan left, yeah, uh, there was still the freedom throughout all of creation, yeah. Now everything could come through. It was almost like heaven could come down to earth, the angels attending him, uh, whenever. And demons, like heaven and hell was at war now. All the gates were open, yeah. They couldn't. It was open, never to be shut. Yeah, that's what it's, it's saying. But, however, since this has this just been bound away from me, Satan, the word away is so important and particular, yeah? Away is you must go to a distance from a particular place, yeah? So you could never come back around me because you will know now that I am him only. You serve me only. And away also means into a particular place for storage, yeah? At that moment, with the away that he said, away from me, Satan, yeah? To a distance from a particular place, from him, yeah? Uh, that was to fulfill the third concern of the conviction of the spirit of truth, which is judgment. And that judgment is because the ruler of this world stands convicted, yeah? He stands convicted because... Jesus just proved all that by the word, by how he glorified the Lord over himself still. But him only means that there has been accomplished a power that if I, by what I just said, was not true, you would still be here tempting me and being like, you told me to go away. Why am I still here then? Obviously, you're not. You, you are not who you are. Yeah. But Satan's like, whoosh, and had to go away, finding only everything open and a freedom, yeah? B being attended by angels, yeah? When it says, and, and angels came and attended him, they're talking both, yeah? There was an attendance of angels among Lucifer and attendance among angels of Jesus, the son of man, God, prince of heaven, everything. Yeah, that's why he had to speak in the ways that he did throughout the entire time and couldn't say it. And pretty much told people plainly, but couldn't just be yes and no. Yeah? Not yet, anyway. Um, until th certain things was accomplished. That's why even in that, when certain things were coming down and being revealed, he would even tell those who was it, it was revealed to, do not tell anyone what you know right now until something happens, which will happen soon. Okay? But right now, keep it quiet because all the doors are open. But if something comes through, like, something cannot come through right now, and they're not aware of that, yeah? But once this happens on earth, which I'm going to bind, yeah, the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, I bind on earth, or loose on earth, and once, and it will be loose and uh, open, or loose or bound in heaven, yeah? That's when you can proclaim everything, and also because I have declared to you, that you are the rock I will build my church on and the, king, and the gates of Hades will never overcome you. Yeah, it was all set up. It's perfectly set up. And so when away from me, Satan was declared, that was to finish the third concern for the judgment that the kingdom or the ruler of this, uh, the earth stands condemned. Yeah, and could only then, even though everything was free, could only do what heaven, what the Lord permitted him to do. Yeah, that's why he was allowed to uh, be a veil over the hearts of certain people until a certain time. That's why the times of the Gentiles and the half of time, yeah, times of the Gentiles was given uh, multiple times to accomplish something and then a half a time to do something else because that uh, power that was given to Satan to veil the hearts, um, that power being told to us in Jesus by the parable of the sower about the seeds scattered along the path where the birds just come and take it. They have no chance, yeah? They have, there's nothing, they, they absolutely have no chance at this moment, yeah? However, God is impartial, yeah? And that's why Satan was allowed a certain power until a certain time 
and that's going to be taken away so that the light of the gospel becomes impartial yeah we do the will of god and it's impartial impartiality no bias yeah if everybody has not equal opportunity to the light of the gospel then that is partial yeah do you see do you understand that so that's why satan has been bound in chains and everything that you see right now you have to trust in the world word and what it said about even uh uh obeying all authorities and rulerships in places at this time because even if it sounds so atrocious to what we have known know in this time which is going to finally at the revelation of jesus christ be what we have all been waiting for yeah uh it is for your benefit so if they're telling you to close the churches yeah because of a covid thing not because you're a christian or we're trying to get rid of religion but literally you close the church because we're trying to prevent the spread of covid let them know that know that the reason for it is because they are in positions of power and authority at this time set there by the one who has authority over everything which is our lord and savior jesus christ the king of kings lord of lords god yeah our savior redemption everything the the all in all the everything yeah uh so that you know yeah and it will be because for your benefit yeah especially those who believe uh and that's why those who believe if they continue doing radically the opposite it is the church that will judge the church first and by your words you will be judged and by your measure you will be judged and in that judgment is not like oh you're judged you're wrong go to hell i've never even preached about hell yeah uh what it is is you will know your division and all you people who are talking as if you're in the head yeah but not obeying the commands and remaining in his love and showing that you are a servant that is in the head and being fed yeah being given the mind of christ yeah not everybody will have that that's why yeah um and by your words you will be judged and by uh the measure of those words will it be measured onto you and wisdom will prove right by her actions and you cannot be deceived no matter how deceptive deceiving you are right now because a man will reap what he sows yeah and the one who sows to please the sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction yeah and like the sinful nature is for everything in the world yeah the l craving of sinful flesh the lust of the eye the boasting of what he has and does this is where it hits the church hardest yeah the boasting because there is all knowledge and all wisdom right now and like i said with the women and that craftiness that's where you can learn about she saw that the fruit was also very uh ad admirable or whatever for wisdom and knowledge yeah um that is the boasting that's where it comes the boasting of what you have and and do yeah and that's why when it comes to uh uh the true test of man yeah it is the praise from other people if people are praising you how are you going to take that yeah that's where it's settled that's where the knowledge the wisdom that's where it can be befuddled that's why wisdom even talks about there's a uh, one me who is uh the true wisdom yeah uh that will give you long life and all this good stuff and i'm preparing even kings and queens and all that stuff and then there is the fake wisdom that if you eat at her table she coaxes you in a, once again a meal of for your stomach but you and it's all grand and it seems so right and it smells good and it feels good but you do not know that you are sitting among the dead and her way leads to sheol yeah how can you tell the difference yeah and that's why there's a wisdom of the world and a wisdom that is above yeah and where does that come and that's why with the wisdom above god befuddles the words of the wise and he frustrates the intellectual with much knowledge comes much uh grief and much wisdom much sorrow yeah um it's stuff like that you have to understand the wisdom the wise words yeah and to know the wise words understand that is then to be able to understand the parable of jesus christ that's why he's spoken parables so that you will be able ever hearing but not able to understand yeah and ever you know seeing and not be being able to ever uh, uh be mindful of it or knowledgeable of it yeah 
because there's a perfection in the righteousness of everlasting capacity. And if all of a sudden you know everything at once, then what more is there? That's why you it's always going to be in steps. It's always going to be in uh, from a whole loaf, broken, eat, eat, eat. Once you have your fill, pick it up and you will find basket one whole basket full of broken loaves with baskets way more yeah, than just five loaves of whole bread. We have now broken pieces after we've already been satisfied of 12 full baskets. It's like that. It The more that you eat, the more you will find it expanding. You, it doesn't disappear somehow, yeah? It's like that. Um, it's an everlasting perfection and growth. It's a righteousness, yeah, um, that comes through faith. So, and in the away from me, Satan, it was being set up that the particular word, yeah, for the next part, which is into a particular place for storage because he was setting it up for the next encounter with Satan, which will be right after he gave Peter, Simon Peter, who then was revealed by what he said about the Son of Man, yeah, the title of the Son of Jonah and you will be the rock which I build my church upon and the kingdom or the gates of Hades will never overwhelm. Yeah. And then right after that, Simon Peter did something and it was get behind me, Satan. And I will go through that part to connect everything um, to, you know, to because it's been re revealed for me to share. But this video is an hour <laughs> and a pretty long time so anyway thank you and I hope that uh, you heard some stuff <laughs> I come in the name of the Lord and thank you bye